Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Cooking for the Family. I'm Devon and today I'm going to share with you how to make corned beef and cabbage in the crock pot. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner and this is just such a nice little meal to make and it whips up and comes together so nicely in the crock pot. Our corned beef that we are going to be using today is the one that I have in the package here and this is just shy of four pounds. This is about 3.8 pounds I think I have here. And I always like to choose one that has a nice uh, good amount of marbling that you can see throughout the meat. And also it has um, at least half or at least 60% of the meat is covered with a little bit of that fat cap on top. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to be using some Yukon Gold potatoes and you can use either Yukon Gold potatoes or either you can use red potatoes. Either one of those is going to work good in the crock pot when it comes to that long stewing, that long cooking. And so you want to use about two pounds. And so I have about two pounds of my potatoes that I have been peeling and also we're going to just um, have them. I'm going to cut them in half and some if they're kind of big, we can also cut them in fourths okay but you want to leave them kind of big when you're making your um corned beef and potatoes and carrots and cabbage in your crock pot now if you are new to my channel welcome and if you're a returner welcome back and i want to thank you all for your wonderful likes your shares your subscribes and just helping my wonderful little channel to grow and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet i invite you to hit that subscribe button and become one of my awesome subscribers now, once we have our potatoes all prepared, next we move on to our carrots. Now, our carrots, you can use the um, regular carrots that I'm using. You can also use the baby carrots as well. And if you're using the baby carrots, you want to use about a cup and a half of baby carrots. Okay. Well, it kind of depends on um, how much carrots that your family really likes. But anywhere from a cup of the baby carrots, you can just leave them whole to a cup and a half works good. And then if you're using just the regular carrots, I use three regular carrots. If they're big, you wanna use two, okay? But as always, in the description box below, I will have a list of all the ingredients you, you need to make your corned beef and cabbage in the crock pot. Also, we're going to be using some onion and I'm using a yellow onion. You can use either a yellow onion, and this is not a sweet onion, so this is a regular yellow onion, and also you want to have it in big chunks, just like I did there. I cut it up in big chunks. You want to use half of an onion. The onion I had was really big, so I used about a third um, that I was using of the onion. Once I put it in the crock pot, just kind of separate the layers of your onion just like that but leave them in big whole pieces everything's going to be kind of chunky and so now in the crock pot i'm putting in my potatoes and this is a layering so first we did the carrots and then we did um, our onion and now we're going to layer in those big chunks of potato and then next we're going to put in some garlic and we're going to be using two cloves of garlic and so we're going to uh, peel the garlic and we're going to add those directly to the crock pot. Now our corned beef is going to cook in our crock pot from about 8 to 10 hours. Okay, We're also going to put in one bay leaf. Now a good friend of mine um, has Irish heritage and about four years ago she had the privilege of going to Ireland her and her husband she brought me back a really sweet gift and I'm gonna share what that is at the end of the video but then also she makes corned beef and cabbage every year of course um, during St. Patrick's time and so also uh, her aunt had a really great recipe and so she shared with me the different things that they put in their recipe and so I added them today and this is the, one of the things that she shared with me and that is using the spicy brown mustard and so that's what we're going to put we're going to put one tablespoon of this spicy brown mustard now over the years when I've made my corned beef and cabbage in the crock pot I had not added this particular ingredient but I tried it out and mm, y'all it's so good and so we added in that one tablespoon and you just want to smear it all over just like I'm doing right just like that it adds that little extra depth of taste and flavor to our corned beef as it is slow cooking in our crock pot and it just comes out so delicious Oh, and also when I was talking about the onion, you can use uh, a white onion as well. Now, this is what we're going to put in. We're putting in some of this pale ale, and I'm actually using an extra pale ale. 
And when it comes to the beer that you're using um, to make your corned beef and cabbage in the crock pot, you can use whatever you have on hand. I like to go for the pale ales. Of course, a lot of people love to use the Guinness as well. I have found that the pale ale, or like I'm using the extra pale ale beer, um, really work well when I'm making it in the crock pot. So we're gonna set our crock pot to eight hours and we're going to set it on low. And while our crock pot is cooking, we're going to prepare our cabbage. Now, I like to, um, put my cabbage in a little bit later i don't add my cabbage in right away with our corned beef because over that time over the eight hours you'll find if you add the cabbage in right away that through the cooking process of the crock pot the cabbage is going to break down and you're just going to have these little tiny pieces that's going to be in your crock pot and so i like to put it in later on and i'll share with you when's the best time that i found to add the cabbage to our crock pot now when i'm doing the cabbage as well I'm using, this is kind of more of a small, this was kind of a small to medium head of cabbage. And I'm going to be using the whole head of cabbage. And I like to make it into chunky pieces. But you can make it as small or as large as you like. But I found that those chunky pieces really work best when we're going to add those later on. We're also going to be garnishing it with some fresh flat leaf parsley as well. And we're just going to add a little bit of that. Now also... I use that one um, 12 ounce of the beer that I added. However, if you'd like to add something else, you don't have to use the beer. You can actually use water if you like, and you can use one and a half cups of water. Now, when you're adding the beer or either the water, the one and a half cups of water or either the 12 ounces of beer, it may not seem like enough liquid to adequately um, cook our corned beef in our crock pot with the potatoes and everything, but it is going to be enough liquid because as your corned beef starts to cook, it's going to release some of those wonderful juices, okay? It's going to release a lot of wonderful juices. And also, when you put your corned beef in your crock pot, you want to cook it, the corned beef fat side up, meaning the top of the corned beef that I had put, that one tablespoon of the spicy mustard, I was rubbing that and putting that on top of the fat cap, okay? So that is going to be at the top and then the rest of the meat's on the bottom, okay? And so that's how you want to cook it. So now our corned beef has been cooking for about half the time. And so we're just at about four hours of cooking time. And as you see, you want to make sure also to leave the top on your crock pot for that first three to four hours of cooking, you want to really build up that nice heat that's in your crock pot. So that way your corned beef really starts to cook. And when we flipped it over, did you see how nice the meat was looking? It is coming along so nicely. And as you saw how we only use those 12 ounces of the beer or either using the one and a half of the um, of water, which is the same measurement, that you see how much liquid it's already has made in our crock pot that we already have. And then what I do now is that because there's a lot of liquid and now it's kind of risen, I can go in and nestle the corned beef down a little bit more into the crock pot. I'm gonna put the top back on our crock pot and let it continue to cook. So our corned beef has cooked for that last 30 minutes our crock pot is done it's been eight hours and i am looking of course our potatoes are nice and tender and then do you see right there when your meat starts to pull away and you can lift it up like i'm doing just like that that's when you know that yes your corned beef is ready it's feeling nice and tender i'm just going to smooth out that spicy mustard that we added on top the crock pot is still nice and hot i'm going to um, put 30 more minutes on the crock pot because we've got to do our cabbage but i'm going to do about 10 minutes i'm going to let my parsley i'm going to put some parsley on top just like that i'm going to put the top back on i'm going to give this about 10 minutes while i get my cabbage out of the refrigerator and then we're going to go on and we're going to transfer now our corned beef out of the crock pot. I'm going to put it in our dish right here. 
and we're going to let it just settle. I'm going to put it in the dish and while I am going to be slicing it up, we're going to take our cabbage that we took because it's been eight hours. So with the cabbage, after I um, have it in the bowl, I go in and I put my bowl in the refrigerator and let it stay in there for those hours. And so now we've got our cabbage and so we're just adding it directly to our crock pot just like this. We're going to also sprinkle some more of that parsley on top of the cabbage. We're going to put the top on. Now because our crock pot is nice and hot, it's been cooking for the eight hours, our cabbage will not take long to cook at all. It's going to take anywhere from about 20 minutes to about 30 minutes. We like ours a little bit on the crispy side. If you like your cabbage really soft, then you can go up to about 40 or 45 minutes. But I have found in this nice hot crock pot that we have cooked over this time, that when you put the top on, about 20 minutes, the cabbage really does wilt down and it becomes a nice texture, a nice consistency for our dish. And you also want to be sure to leave the top on during the time that your cabbage is cooking. So our cabbage has cooked up nicely. It has really started to soften. It is looking great. We've got some of those nice crispier pieces and some of those softer pieces of our cabbage. Just the right texture that we were looking for to go with our corned beef. Now while our cabbage was cooking, I had put foil over our corned beef and now it is time for us to go on and slice it up and see how our corned beef is looking. Now when you're slicing your corned beef, you want to make sure that you want to go against the grain, okay? Not with the grain, but against the grain so you can get those nice tender pieces, all right? And so when we slice into this, this is what our corned beef is looking like. And let me tell you, this is going to make not only a nice dinner for St. Patrick's Day, but it's also going to make wonderful sandwiches. And so we always have some really nice corned beef sandwiches that we take the next day for work and school, and it just comes out so good, y'all. Now also, in the pack of uh, corned beef, how it comes, you're gonna also have a lot of juice in there when you first open up the pack. Now I don't keep the juice, I don't add the juice to my crock pot. You can add that juice that comes in the package with your corned beef. You can add those juices right into your crock pot. It's going to give your corned beef that more of a salty, briny taste to it. Um, and so if you want a little bit of that salty brininess to it, those juices that are in the package, once you open up your corned beef, you can definitely add those to the crock pot. I left them out, but it's definitely something that's an option. It's kind of depending on your taste, okay? Now, once we've sliced everything up, I like to take some of the juice, put it right on top, and now let's go on and serve us up some, and let's see how we did. We're gonna get some of this cabbage. I'm gonna get us some carrots and some potatoes, and we are going to just give this a try and see how we did today with our corned beef and cabbage. And this is what our plate is looking like. We've got that great corned beef, the potatoes, the cabbage. Look how nice and tender our meat is, y'all. Oh my goodness. We cooked it up so nicely in this crock pot. Let me get your bite ready. That bite right there, that's for you. Now let me give it a try. See how we did. Mmm. Oh wow. Yes, this. Oh my goodness. Tender. Oh my goodness. This meat is so tender, y'all. The potatoes have cooked up nicely. We got the cabbage. It cuts so nicely. Oh wow, well I hope you give this recipe a try. And that tablespoon of spicy mustard that my friend said her aunt always adds when she is making her corned beef, it really made a difference in this meal. It is so good. I just feel like I just want to make myself a nice sandwich right now, y'all. So I hope you give this recipe a try. And that wonderful gift that my friend got for me was this right here. A lovely apron from Ireland that reads, An Irish blessing wherever you go, whatever you do. May the luck of the Irish be there with you. Well, that is it for me today, y'all. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go on and hit that subscribe button. And remember, it's always good when Devon is cooking for the family. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.